السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته <تصفيق> الحمد لله الحمد لله الذي لم يزل ولا يزال حيا قيوما سميعا بصيرا ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله ونشهد أن سيدنا وولانا محمد صلوات الله وسلامه عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وبارك وسلم تسليما كثيرا كثيرا أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الرسول كلوا من الطيبات واعملوا صالحا وقال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم من أكل طيبا وعمل في سنته وعمل الناس بوائقه دخل الجنة وقال عليه الصلاة والسلام لا تزال قدم عبد يوم القيامة حتى يسأل عن خمس العمره فيما أفناء وعن شبابه فيما أبلاء وعن ماله من أين اكتسب وفيما أنفقه وعن علمه ماذا عمل به وكما قال صلى الله عليه وسلم صدق الله وصدق رسوله النبي الكريم ونحن على ذلك لمن الشاهدين والشاكرين والحمد لله رب العالمين رب الشرح لي صدري ويسل لي أمري وحل الأقضة من لساني يفقه قولي مدرس بكر بذز نلز العلماء Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us one life in this world. And when we finish and we leave this world and our time for mort and death has come and we leave, we have to give answer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the topic today that I have in mind to speak about is one of the questions which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask us and what is it will be our answer. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says in a hadith, لا تزالوا قدم عبد يوم القيامة حتى يسألوا عن خمس The person will not move from his place on day of qiyamah until he is answered by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala five questions. Five questions which Allah Rabbul Izzat will ask us. That's the day of Qiyamah, which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, with the whole world of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there will be five questions that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask us. And we have to give answer to these questions. So the first is, An umrihi fi ma afna. How did you pass your life? How was your life spent? The second is, وَأَنْ شَبَابِهِ فِي مَا أَبْلَى How did you spend your youth? And then the third and fourth question is the topic of my talk today. وَأَنْ مَالِهِ مِنْ أَيْنِ اكْتَسَبْ وَفِي مَا أَنْفَقَ وَأَنْ مَالِهِ مِنْ أَيْنِ اكْتَسَبْ وَفِي مَا أَنْفَقَ That where did you get your wealth from and where did you spend it? Where did you get your income from? And where did you spend it? Income and expenditure. And the last is, وَعَنْ مَالِهِ مِنْ وَعَنْ عِلْمِهِ مَاذَا عَمِلَ بِهِ And the knowledge which Allah gave you, how much did you practice upon this knowledge? So my dear respected brothers and elders, I've got a lady that going to the Zukana. I think she look, there's a lady that going to the Zukana. She must be looking for the ladies. Okay. So my dear respected brothers and elders, the fourth and fifth question, the third and fourth question which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to ask us is a very, very important question and how will we give an answer to this? Relating to this, once a sahabi was leaving his home to go and make some money, what we say in normal terms, do business, and from behind his wife, his spouse, said to him some golden words golden words which are very very important for us <clears throat> his spouse said to him said iyaka wa kasbil haram iyaka wa kasbil haram fa inna nasbiru ala al ju' fa inna nasbiru ala al ju' wa la nasbiru ala nar jahannam that make sure you stay away from bringing Haram income into our home. 
any kind of haram, any kind of haram, money, wealth, any kind. And the second part he says, uh, she says, فَإِنَّا نَصْبِرُ عَلَى الْجُورِ That we can do sabr, we can be patient, we can persevere upon hunger. وَلَا نَصْبِرُ عَلَى نَارِ جَهَنَّمْ We cannot be patient or we cannot... We, we will not be able to burden ourselves with the fire of Jahannam. Very, very important words. So, my dear Smaki brothers and this <clears throat> today, we, when we go into a supermarket, for example, we see a new item. What we do, look, we look at the ingredients. Or we ask someone, is this halal? Or if somebody is there, or there's something, whatever, is the gelatin inside, or is there any haram ingredient? But before that, my dear speakers and list, we have to think to ourselves, the money that I'm going to spend to buy this item, the money that I'm going to, buy to spend to buy food, vegetables, is this halal or haram? So this is the first step. This is the first step. As the hadith of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi says, طلب الحلال فريضة بعد الفريضة That to earn halal income is a compulsory act out of the compulsory acts of that being put upon us from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So moving on onto the topic, it's very, very important for us to have halal income. And be it we're working for someone, be it we're doing business, whatever we're doing, uh, we gain our knowledge and we acquire that knowledge from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us. And given the ulama and the muftiyan in our locality, that they can learn, that we can learn from them the masail of every part of our life. Likewise, our income. So we are doing business. We are in doubt about something. We ask someone who is learned, a alim, mufti, whoever. These days it's very easy for communication, WhatsApp, email, whatever. And we acquire the knowledge. Why by this recognition? Because طَلَبُ الْعِلْمِ فَرِيضَةٌ عَلَى كُلِّ Muslim. That to gain that much knowledge which will lead our 24 hours life is farad, is a necessary, obligatory upon every male and female believer. So likewise, how, how for example, uh, we want to buy a house. And whatever transactions we have to do, go through, we will contact a lawyer. And he will explain to us what will be the steps to do, to go forward with the transaction. Likewise, whatever in our 24 hours life we are doing, be it going to the bathroom, be it go, coming to the masjid, be it doing business, be it working, whatever you're doing, uh, wherever we need to acquire knowledge, we must acquire knowledge. Why this is part of our life? We are Muslim. We are believers. We follow the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And while following the footsteps of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has taught us every step in our life. Min al-mahdi ila al-lahd. From the cradle until the grave. Every part of our life, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has given us examples and he's led us and he's taught us through his hadith and through explaining the Quran how to lead our life. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Ya ayyuh al-Rasul, Kulu min al-tayyibati wa'amanu saliha. That O oh, messengers, that Kulu min al-tayyibat, eat from the good and do good a'mal, do pious, do, do the right deeds. So the link of the, that the Mufassirin and the Muhaddithin, the ulama ikram say, the link between both of these, these things, Kulu min al-tayyibat wa'amanu saliha. That when we will have halal go into our stomachs, then the accordingly the amal will come on the exterior. Externally, our amal will come out according to what goes into our stomach, what we consume, and what we eat, and what we drink. According to what we we ha- we, we are consuming, then accordingly the amal will be accordingly. So that's why. We see another, um, another, another hadith of Rasulullah Sallallahu Man akala tayyiban Whoever eats good things Pure things uh, Wa amila fi sunnatihi And acts upon the sunnah of Rasulullah Sallallahu 
The people are saved from his any kind of wrong or any, any kind of evil. He will enter into Jannah. So our main thing is that our income, whatever we're eating, whatever we are drinking, throughout our life, everything should be halal, should be permissible. Uh, we, we, we come across different, different dealings in this day and age, uh, which we come across all the time, either in our business dealings, either whatever we're doing, either selling a product or any kind of mishaps that happen. We can remember the story of Imam Abu Hanifa, rahmatullahi alayhi. He was, even though he was the Imam and Imam Azam, and he was a very great scholar, but he was a silk merchant. He was a silk merchant. So one day, he sent out one of his salesmen to sell something, but he had forgotten, and he, has, he had told the salesman that this item has, the, 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 there's an error in the item. There's something wrong with the item. So when you sell it onwards, make sure you let the, 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 the person who's buying it, the clientele, make sure you know, let them know that something's wrong with the item. So what happened is that when at the end of the day, the item was sold, so Imam Abu Hanifa rahmatullahi, asked the person, did you mention to the, the, the customer that there's something wrong with the item? He said, oh, sh- I forgot. So Imam Sahib rahmatullahi alayhi, because of his taqwa and his piety, that day he had made 30,000 dirhams. He took everything and gave it in sadaqah. He took everything and gave it in sadaqah. Even though, of course, if the item had cost 10,000 dirhams or 1,000 dirhams, he would took out that and give it in sadaqah. No, the, amount, the whole amount that he made that day, in, in selling, he took everything and gave it in sadaq. So this, these are our pious predecessors, how they were very, 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 very concerned of their income, that it was halal, it was pure, and whatever went into their stomach was pure. Remember a story of, of the Abilene of Deoban, may Allah have mercy on their graves, <coughs> and fill their graves with nur. There was a person who used to live in Deoban, and he used to, he was a very simple person. And if I remember, he used to cut wood um, from the forest and sell the wood as firewood. And every day out of his earnings, he would put, together, put some money aside into a savings. And that savings was, he put together every day for a whole year. And that money was spent to do a da'wat. Um, an invitation for the ulama of the de- of the madrasa of the room deoban. He would do this every year. So the ulama that used to go to this dawat is mentioned in the kitabs that they would say the spirituality that we would feel after the eating this food. We, it was felt in our bodies for long. Why? But because the earning was pure. And the ikhlas was there. And so when tayyib, when you eat something good, then the, the spirituality, the, the feeling inside is different. So it's very, very important for all of us to keep this in mind that whatever, whatever we eat and whatever we do, we do it, <coughs> we know what we are doing, everything is halal, it's not prohibited. And how Rasulullah Wasallam says in a hadith, التاجر الصدوق الأمين مع النبيين والصديقين والشهداء that a person who does business a businessman who is صدوق الأمين who is truthful and who is honest tomorrow on day of قيامت he will be with the نبيين صديقين and شهداء the prophets the truthful and the martyrs so what, such a high status is given to a person who is doing business the right way. Selling his products the right way. Dealing with persons the right way. If there's any faults in their products, you mention them. All these different, different honesty requirements which our deen tells us is very, very important for all of us. Why? Because my dear respected brothers and elders, whatever we are earning, 
and whatever we get is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and whatever we use in this world we use it and whatever is left over out of our earnings it stays in the world we don't take nothing in the grave so it's aman from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and our Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran inna Allah ashtara min al-mu'mineen amwalahum wa anfusum bi anna lahum al-jannah that this wealth and ourselves which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us as amanat and he's bought it from us also why? that if we will use these two items in the right way we will get jannat and this life in this world if not today tomorrow we leave the world and we have to give hisab for everything we do so why don't we think to ourselves that we should do it the right way how the poet says Oh my friend, nobody can get away from death. Everybody has to die. Saman Sabaraska. Today we will say Saman Hazabaraska. Today we have enough provisions for a hundred years or a thousand years. Palki Khabarnahi. We do not have guarantee that we will live another eye blink. That's our life today. Many times we hear a person is stopped at the traffic lights before it turns from red to green, he's passed away. A person goes to a, a restaurant to eat, he's eating, and the food, instead of going down, his throat is gone through his windpipe, he's blocked his windpipe, he dies. Saman saw baraska palki khabarna. So my respected brothers and elders, huh? we have to think to ourselves that how we're going to give hisab to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how we're going to answer that third and fourth question, where did you get your money from, where did you get your wealth from, and where do you spend it? So income, expenditure. Think to ourselves, if Allah has given us, blessed us with a lot of money, or Allah, whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us with, huh? How do we spend our money? Are we extravagant? Or do we set according to our needs? These are all the things that we, are, we need to think about and lead our life. Because tomorrow, as I told you in the starting, uh, when we have to face Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we have to give an answer how they say in Urdu, Kori Kori ka hisab dena. Kori Kori ka hisab dena. We have to give hisab for every atom, every cent. Uh, why? Because we are, we are servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this life Allah has given us is amanat. This wealth is amanat. This self and our, our body is amanat. So we have to give his self for this in the hereafter. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take account from us. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us all the understanding. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the tawfiq to <coughs> earn halal. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, one, one thing in the end I want to mention is the last words of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Is, he said, As-salah wa ma malakat aymanukum. As-salah wa ma malakat aymanukum. That be careful, be aware of your salah, look after your salah, and look after your subordinates. There's two things the ulama say here. As-salah is the word salah, of course, the most important worship. But everything that comes under it, al hukukullah Everything that comes under it, al hukukullah and وَمَا مَلَكَتْ أَيْمَانُكُمْ Everything that comes under the But that's not the point there. The point here that I'm trying to mention is that Alhamdulillah, MashaAllah, there's many people who have businesses here who have subordinates, who are people, have working, people working under them, who have employees. Uh, look after your employees. Um, treat them well. Treat them in, in, in a humane way. Uh, this is the teachings of our Islam. This is the teachings of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You hear from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam many a times that he, if a person treated a slave in a wrong way, he would, he, uh, he, he, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would tell him to go and apologize. This is, the, this is our deen, my dear speculators. It's not that because I am big in the company or I own the company, that whoever's under me are slaves. They should be treated like animals. No, my dear speculators. Our deen teaches us justice. Our, our deen teaches us akhlaq. Our deen teaches us to treat everyone fair. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give me and all of us the understanding. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the tawfiq to earn halal and spend our, spend our money 
through the which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be happy with us. Wa akhir da'wana alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulihi Muhammadin wa alayhi wa sallam.